So now we move on to the concept of a basis for a vector space. So, so far, a ba basis, the definition of a basis is basically a combination of the two ideas we just looked at earlier in the previous videos, which are on the spanning and linear independence. So if, um, assuming that V is our target vector space or any vector space, so V is any vector space and S, which equals V1, V2, um, is just any uh, sort of, this is N here, uh, is any set of vectors, a finite set of vectors, which of course all belong to V. So S is in V, the set of vectors. Uh, then S is called, then S is a basis for V. S is a basis for V, v if number one, um, S is a linearly independent set of vectors. So if it's a linearly independent set of vectors, we say that's the first condition satisfied. And the second uh, equally important condition is that S spans V. So if all the vectors in V can be represented as a linear combination of the vectors in S, and all the vectors in S themselves are linearly independent, we say that S is a basis for V. That is, that's the definition of um, a basis set. Okay, it's called a basis. Now, let's look at some examples. The, most, uh, the, the simplest of examples are the uh, standard basis for Rn, for instance. Um, I'd look at um, uh, the standard basis for Rn um, are these uh, vectors um, where we, uh, let's call them V1 equals 1, 0, up to N of these. V2 is 0, 1, 0, and of course N components, remember, and so on we have Vn, which is in fact 0, 0, n of these, 0, and 1. So what it's telling you is that um, the 1 keeps moving down the, the, down the line. So uh, essentially, here you have the first component is 1, and the rest are all zeros. Here you have the second component is 1, everything else is zeros, and, and, you, and the third one will be the third component, and so on, until the nth component is 1, and everything else is zeros. So if the vectors are defined like this, these n vectors, then these vectors themselves are in fact linearly independent of each other. And in fact, they are, um, they span the entire space uh, Rn in fact, okay? So um, here uh, we say that uh, these vectors, these set of vectors here are standard bases standard basis for Rn, okay? So there are standard bases for Rn. Smaller, uh, if I want to if I want to quickly perhaps show you on a smaller scale, a uh, quick example would be, for instance, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, and 0, 0, 1. So if you look at this, um, I can quickly show you, for instance, if we wanted to, sh this, this basically is, this is a basis for R3. It's a standard basis for R3. Now, if you look at it, um, in order to prove linear independence, I would have to do the following. Okay. I will have to set up this equation. All right. And, and basically show that the only solution to this equation is the trivial solution. Now, in fact, if I if I do set this up, I end up with this uh, coefficient matrix, okay, which you all will recognize as the identity matrix, in fact. And if this is the coefficient matrix, let's call it A, we know that the determinant of A is not going to be zero. In fact, it's one. Okay, it's one in fact because this is a diagonal matrix, and the and the determinant of a diagonal matrix are the uh, product of the diagonal entries. So the determinant is one, which is not zero, which means that a inverse exists 
okay uh, in fact um, inverse itself is just the identity matrix in this case because this is the identity matrix so what happens is that in fact uh, k1 k2 um, uh, are all going to be zero so only trivial solution possible so we've quickly shown the linear independence part and now the other part uh, also follows uh, in suit because if this determinant is is uh, exists that means there's a unique solution so there's a unique solution to instead of the zero zero here if i replace that with say a b c representing any vector in r3 then of course this will mean that i k1 with k1 equal to a k2 equal to b and k3 equal to c i you know, we can find um, we can um, this this will be basically the linear combination that represents any arbitrary vector in r3 so therefore it is a basis for r3 just uh, as a demonstration i just wanted to show you that now in a similar way we also have let's look at some other standard uh, bases quickly this is the standard basis this is the standard basis for um the polynomial space pn okay so this is a standard basis for pn all right for pn because all you have to do is take a linear combination of these so what we're saying essentially here is you have these vectors p0 is 1 p1 is x all the way up to pn which is x to the n so all of these vectors um, your the, the vectors p0 to pn uh, their linear combinations will give you any vector in the polynomial space pn okay so this is a standard basis for pn okay uh, standard basis for the uh, let's say the m m22 space we've looked at before would be for instance uh, if we look at uh, for instance m22 standard basis for m22 is m1 equals 1 0 0 1 oh sorry 0 m2 equals 0 1 0 0 m3 equals 0 0 1 0 and m4 equals 0 0 0 1 so that's a standard basis for m22 and in a similar way you can find a standard basis for m um, and mn okay in a similar manner Okay, so let's move on then to um, but of course keep in mind please that if a vector if a set spans but is not linearly independent then that is not a basis for uh, a vector space. Okay, so um, there's another related concept which is called the coordinate vector V relative to S. So as I said in my original if we have S Again, just to remind you, S is V1, V2, Vn. Now, what we're told is that uh, S, in fact, is a basis for the vector space V. Now, of course, if there is another vector V now in, uh, this is capital V and this is small v. So if there is a vector, let's say, let's call it U. So there is a vector U in V such that, um, obviously, because... Um, v is spanned by S, then it will always be possible to write U as a linear combination of these vectors. Okay, I'm sorry, one sec. So it's always going to be possible to write uh, this kind of a combination. All right, so U will always be expressible as a linear combination of the vectors uh, in S. Now, these c1s if if we form in, if we construct a vector so the vector uh, let's call it um, uh, let's call it u s okay is in fact if we construct the vector which is whose coordinates are in fact these scalar values so these scalar values that you see here c1 v1 c2 v2 and the cn if we actually take these numbers and form and in fact a, a vector out of these then we call this the coordinate one sec so we call it the coordinate vector of u relative to 
S. Okay, and uh, okay. okay. So let S. Uh, here's a, an important result that uh, you you should note. If S is any vector, is any set of vectors that is a basis for a finite dimensional space V, as we've looked at earlier, then a couple of things that you should note. First, if uh, there is another set that has more, more than n vectors, okay, more than n vectors, okay, look at this, this has got n vectors, so if it has more than n vectors, okay, then it is a linearly dependent set, then it is linearly, implies it is linearly dependent, and that's obvious because um, because obviously this other this other set comes from V, and uh, and clearly if it's got more than uh, the the n vectors that are there, then of course they must be expressive as a linear combination of the n vectors, okay, which are linearly independent. If a set has uh, more fewer than n vectors, then it does not span V. So if it has fewer than n vectors. Okay, does not span V, does not span V, okay. So this is an important result to keep in mind. Okay, so let us continue the dimension, the dimension uh, of a vector space, uh, the dimension of a finite dimensional vector space V is denoted by DIM of the vector space V. And it is basically, basically, it is the number of vectors, okay, number. So you just count them. Number of vectors in the basis set. Number of vectors in a basis for V, okay. Number of vectors in a basis for V. Uh, now, of course, uh, just I will note, we will note that the zero vector space is defined to have dimension zero. Okay, so the zero vector space, okay, is dimension uh, is zero, just to note. Okay, so now, for instance, if we go for the, um, if we go for Rn, its dimension would be n. If we go for the dimension of R3, it would be 3. If we uh, go for the dimension of Pn, there are n vectors, so it'll be n. Uh, in fact, n plus 1, because there's um, you have x, x squared up to xn, and now don't forget the, the constant 1, so you have n plus 1 dimension. Uh, the dimension of m, n, m, n, m, n, sorry, okay, is in fact uh, m by n. So it's the product Mn, okay, and so on and so forth. 